Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astros. It's the day before Christmas. It's totally beautiful outside, totally surprising. It's been cloudy for weeks and weeks, so I couldn't resist the urge to get outside and do some kind of astronomy. Uh, so uh, today, as the topic says, we are doing solar observing both Wiley and H Alpha. Let's check it out. All right, so here's the gear that we're running today. <clears throat> Got two scopes, one set up for uh, white light, one set up for um, H alpha observing. So I've got the FS60 uh, set up for white light, so that's the white light filter that blocks, I think, like 99.99 something percent of the sun's light, it makes it um, possible to safely observe the sun through the eyepiece. Let's see if we could actually get a live view here of the sun through the eyepiece. I don't know if I'll be able to capture it. So yeah, there it is. Unfortunately, it's overexposed and I can't seem to adjust the camera controls enough to get it to be uh, exposed correctly. It's just a little too much contrast for the camera to handle. Um, but anyhow, so that's the view through the eyepiece. Uh, second scope is the Teleview uh, 85. The good old TV85, and this is set up for H alpha observing. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. There's dedicated scopes for doing that. There's uh, you can buy a filter that goes on the front of the scope. What I have actually going on is the Daystar Quark, which is this bad boy here. I do have a review of this device on my blog on AVT Astro. Uh, this thing is pretty cool. You can use it and then your refractor from, you know, I don't think there's really too much of a limit on the minimum, but up up to about 120 millimeter. I'm objective. Uh, past 80 millimeter, they do recommend using an IR filter on your diagonal, on the front of the diagonal here. Um, this, with the 85, I'm not running one. Um, and, you know, it works just fine. All the gear is set up on the uh, Los Monday G11 mount. <clears throat> All right, so here we see me kind of going in for a look through the scopes. Uh, so of course, you know, naturally it's kind of hard to convey what I'm actually seeing through the scopes. Um, you know, without you having been there and taking a look, but let's take a look at what can be seen with both H alpha and white light observing. So the first image that I'm posting here, this is actually a screenshot from an article that Sky and Telescope has, which I'll have linked in, in the video notes. Um, awesome, awesome article. I actually read it before I kind of got into H alpha observing. Um, that first slide that they have is a really good comparison of what you can see with uh, H alpha on the left and white light on the right. Now, they don't really show the color difference. Um, you know, they show kind of uh, all in yellow, so th that will look different. And you'll kind of see in the slides uh, that come next uh, as far as pictures that I've taken. Um, but anyhow, so if you look at the the left side image um basically that's again h alpha and um if you look um at the kind of like the disc of the sun or the edge of the sun those are actual prominences that are flying off of there and those to me are kind of like the coolest thing that you can see on the sun um, previous to, you know, H-alpha filters being available to amateur astronomers, you really had to witness or see these uh, during a total solar eclipse. There's not too much of a way of seeing them, um, you know, without a, no, actually having a total eclipse. Uh, now you can actually see them with, you know, something like the quark that, you know, I've got or other H-filter, H-beta or H-alpha filters. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, so as you can see in their image too, so you can see some spots with both filters. Um, and, you know, with the white light, uh, like I said earlier, you really can't see too much more. I mean, some spots do look great though with, uh, with white light. I do really enjoy, you know, seeing them with white light. Honestly, I think they kind of look better with the white light than uh, H-alpha, but they look good in H-alpha as well. Um, some of the other things that you can see with H alpha um, is uh, those kind of streaks that you can see kind of towards the middle of the sun, the dark streaks. Uh, those are called, let's see, looking it up, looking it up. <laughs> um, those are called uh, filaments. Uh, and essentially what those are, as far as I understand, is it's actually prominences, prominences that are flying out of the sun that are kind of more flying directly towards the earth. Uh, so that's why they look darker to us. Uh, the whiter areas um, are uh, called PEG and uh, they basically, um, I'm not super sure how they form. Um, I've read this before. I think it's in the article. So really, I really recommend, highly recommend reading that article. Um, that's why I kind of just took a screenshot of it. You know, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, just take their images and kind of claim them from my own at all. It's an awesome, awesome article. I highly recommend that you read it. Okay, so kind of get into the next um, slide that um, I've got posted there. So that's an actual... Um, image from uh, just doing eyepiece projection through that TAC FS uh, 60. As you can see, there's three sunspots. Uh, actually, really cool to see those. The scene tonight or today wasn't really great. So um, the uh, FS 60 honestly showed those way better in white light because there was less magnification compared to the Teleview 85. Uh, with uh, H alpha, in fact, you know, with H alpha, I couldn't really see any prominences or anything because the scene was so poor, and maybe there wasn't any prominences to see. Uh, but as you can see in the next slide, there, um, you know, you can see that larger sunspot is what it is, um, which is, you know, again the same one from the previous image, but not too much detail there, just because the scene was just, you know, really poor. And you know, with uh, just doing eyepiece projection, usually you don't get the best results anyhow, but. I feel that eyepiece projection is actually kind of a good way to portray what you could actually see through the eyepiece. Uh, next image there, that's actually one that I took. I think that was taken with my uh, Stellarview SV-130. So I actually, I have used the Quark with a 130 millimeter or five inch scope. Works well, just used it with an IR filter. I never had any issues with it. Although I would stick to uh, Daystar's recommendation and not go above a 120 millimeter scope. As you can see, pretty nice prominence on there. Uh, you can see you know, a decent amount of surface detail, so that's really cool. Um, if you're wondering during good scene, uh, if you're actually looking through the telescope, through the cork, uh, all of this detail is much sharper. Again, I haven't really invested too much time into, you know, kind of optimizing uh, the imaging through the cord just because I'm kind of more into visually kind of taking a look, you know, at the sun. Um, but yeah, you visually can see um, much, much more detail. Also, if you are into imaging, you can image much, much more detail as well. All right, all right, guys. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of an idea of what solar observing is all about and how to safely do it. Please, if you're going to attempt to do do it safely, make sure you have the proper filtration. I mean, you know, you only have two chances to look at the sun without the proper filtration. One and then the second one. So do not do it. Unless you have a binary, then you only have one chance. Uh, so anyhow, if you guys found this video interesting, uh, please do consider subscribing. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or anything, leave them in the thing below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.